Um, we are looking at creating the design document for our project and we're following a specific methodology and it's a pretty common methodology and um, the idea is is that you start um, really at the goals because the goals are by definition why you are creating the site and there are goals for both the organization that's creating the site and there's goals for the people visiting the site and the hope is is that those two goals will be aligned at least if not exactly matching that they'll be somewhat matching because that will make for a successful site um, a site that served the purpose of the organization but didn't provide the users anything wouldn't be very effective and also the need uh, the other way around um, a band site for example may um, you know if a band site were to give away all their music for free that may satisfy the users of the site but that wouldn't satisfy the the band itself so you try to come up with goals that are uh, compatible and that that overlap to a degree um, we talked about the first step of this prod, uh, of this process and it's, it's a five-step process um, and the first step was a strategy step and the strategy step involves the defining of goals uh, we also talked about the reason that why we do this and the reason why we do this is first of all instead of just having a vague plan in your head it forces you to put things down on paper and define them more specifically um, I, I guess to use maybe a, a kind of silly analogy it's like going to the grocery store with um, thinking that you know what you want and uh, as opposed to writing down and making a list right you're more apt to remember everything or most things if you if you make a list as opposed to like yeah I know what, what it is I need I know what I'm gonna get um, so it's good to get your thoughts down on paper it's good when you have to share them with people and those people could either be the people for whom you're developing the site or for other members of the team that are going to be help helping you develop the site because you're not going to be you know if it's a larger site especially you may be working with a team of, of web developers um, and certainly if you're developing it for an organization you might want to share your ideas with the organization before you put them in, in, in practice um, and that way if there's any oversights or mistakes you can catch them early on and move forward so the first step the strategy section you define the goals so for your particular design document in the strategy section you make a brief summary of what your project is about you then define personas and I'm asking you to develop three and they are three kinds of users and we saw some examples last time you know they can include photos of the person they can uh, include a, a fictional name and other characteristics but the idea is is you want to make these people seem real because they're the people for whom you are developing the site um, and for almost any project you can think of three different kinds of people for larger projects you can certainly think of more than three um, and for example in our band we talked about someone who's familiar with the band someone who's not familiar with the band and a club owner that may be looking to hire uh, a band to play at their club so it's not that hard to come up with three different personas uh, and if you get stuck by all means we can talk about that for each of the personas you're to come up with three goals and also goals for the organization that's making the site now the thing I would like to remind you about goals again is that they should be goals related to the content of the site and not simply a restatement of web uh, development techniques or web design practices 
So for example, you wouldn't say a goal is for my site to have good navigation. Well, of course you want your site to have good navigation, right? I mean, that's, that goes without saying, you know. Uh, of course you want your site to look attractive. Of course you want your site to be easy to read and so on. That's just restating good web design or page design principles. The goals relate to the specific content of the site. So a goal might be that um, a goal for the organization might be something like you want to increase concert attendance or you want to increase club bookings for this band or you want to sell more merchandise or you want to sell more music or something along those lines. That's something that relates to the content, not relating to the way the website works. And same thing for the user's goals. Users are not going to come to your site to admire how great your navigation is. Users are going to be looking for specific pieces of information or be looking to do a specific thing. Um, a user may be looking to find out where your band's going to appear over the next month or to go and, and listen to samples of the music to see if they um, are going to like the band or not. Uh, those are things that would, would qualify as goals. Now that's the strategy section. That's what we went over last time. The second phase is the scope phase. And the scope phase is a list of requirements. And requirements are simply statements of stuff that is going to be on your website. You don't have to worry about organizing it now. You just list the things that are going to be on your website. Keep in mind that any goal that you have can be solved a number of different ways. You could, for example, if one of your goals is to, um, if one of the goals of your users is to find out if you like the band or not, find out if you'd enjoy their music or not, you could achieve that goal by having a video, by having audio samples, 30 second samples of songs, by having full songs, you know, maybe, maybe 10 30 second samples or two full songs or something like that. So you could achieve that goal a bunch of different ways. All right? You have to decide in this section how you're going to go and do that, how you're going to achieve the goals that you've set out to do. So, here you simply list the stuff that's going to be on your site. So maybe for our band, we're going to say we're going to have one video of a concert appearance. Two complete songs that can be downloaded. A calendar of upcoming events. A page that has reviews that appeared in local newspapers. A page that is going to have contact information so that club owners can contact us to, to hire us to, to appear. These would all be examples of requirements. Now how many requirements that you have, uh, do you have? Well, you have to make sure you've covered all your goals. Every goal that you define here is likely going to match with one or more than one. I'm sorry, every requirement that you define is likely going to match with one or more than one goal. All right? And therefore, you want to make sure that for every goal you have at least one requirement. If you've identified a particular goal is something that is one of the most important things that you want to achieve from your site or your users want to get out of your site, well, you better have stuff on your page, you better have stuff on your site that helps achieve those goals. Otherwise, what good is it? All right. If your goal is, for example, if the goal for the organization um, is to get more uh, club bookings, 
and you've identified one of your personas, one of the most important groups of people that are going to be visiting your site as club owners deciding whether to hire them or not. There better be something on your site that helps the club owners decide whether you're an appropriate band to hire and helps them make that decision, whether it be samples of music, whether it be information of how to contact the band, and so on and so forth. All right. So for every goal, you'll have at least one requirement. And the reverse is true. For every requirement, every requirement should correspond to a goal. The idea is this. If you define something as something that you want to have on your site and it doesn't really relate to any of your goals, well, maybe you don't need it on your site. Maybe it's just extra additional clutter that's going to get in the way. Like maybe a band's biography. You know, the biography of the musicians in the band. Is that important or not? Well, I don't know. It depends on what the goal is for the, for the organization uh, and for the band and for what you've defined the goals for the users be. Maybe that's not so important to find out when the lead guitarist took his first guitar lesson. Maybe that's just uh, going to be clutter. So you define a list of these requirements. And for your project, I would guess 15-ish, 20-ish requirements, 20, 15, something like that, pieces of content that you're going to have on your site. And these need to correspond to the goals. So every requirement should match up with at least one goal, and every goal should have at least one requirement associated with it. Now again, sometimes, sometimes goals uh, overlap, and so one requirement could achieve a couple different goals. Um, putting your contact information will both help you achieve your goal of getting more club bookings and will help club owners find you and contact you to find out like how much you charge and, and all that. So uh, one requirement could match up with um, several goals. This should probably be simply a bulleted list. All right, in a Word document. Here's the requirements and just Boom, a list going down the line. That's the scope section of your project. All right. Third step of your project. And again, this is documented in the, um, in the um, uh, project documents, project uh, um, documents uh, in Canvas. The third step is where you have a, what's called a structure chart. And a structure chart shows how you're going to lay out your site. And again, keeping in mind who your personas are, what their goals are, can help you define how to do this. This actually becomes, for larger sites, becomes a really big deal. All right? Let's forget about the band for a second. And let's think if we were doing a sporting goods store. And we were doing a website for a sporting goods store. What are some ways that we could organize our website? What are some ways we could organize our website? Let me just ask, if you, if you have a sporting goods store, how could you organize the different products in a sporting goods store? By sport. All right. So you could have, I'm just going to throw these up here. You could have a home page. And you could have a page for golf, a page for basketball. A page for running, and so on. And then maybe under golf, you would have clothing, shoes, equipment. And maybe under basketball, you'd have the same thing. Under running, you'd have the same thing, and so on. That's one way, and that's a reasonable way to organize the products in a sporting goods store. All right? 
What would be a different way? It doesn't have to be a good way, but what would be a different way that at least is maybe reasonable? By team, if, if you are talking about um, like apparel, especially, you know, you could have um, you know, Cleveland Browns, Indians, Cavs, and so on. So if you're talking about a sporting goods store that mainly sells like apparel, you could do it that way. What's a different way? By product. You could have a home page and have apparel, shoes, and equipment. What's another way? You're just brainstorming now. They don't have to be great ideas. Men's and women's. So you could have a men's section, a women's section, maybe if you have kids stuff too, a boy and girl section. All right. Um, let's see. Let's think of a, a couple more. You could have by brand. You could have a Nike section, a Reebok section. Puma section, an Adidas section, and so on. So you could organize it that way. You could organize it seasonally. Summer sports, winter sports, spring sports, fall sports. All right? I'm not saying that all these are good ideas. All right? But these are choices that you have and options that you have. The idea here in the structure phase is you decide what way is the best way to organize the pages on your site. All right? Keeping in mind two things. Keeping in mind the requirements that you have. In other words, keeping in mind the stuff that you are going to have on your site. And keeping in mind how your personas are going to be viewing your page and what way of organization might be most meaningful to them. So, if we were going to do a, a, a again, if we were going to do a, a page for our local band, that would probably be a small enough site to fit within sort of the project definition. What sorts of pages might we have? How would we divide up our content? Would we have everything on one page? Probably not. Would we have every requirement that we listed on its own page? Also probably not. We probably would organize them in some way. If I was thinking of doing this, and I'm running out of paper here, I'd probably have a home page so that anyone landing on it would know that that is what the site was about. I might have a page of music that I would put the video clip in the audio pages that I had. Um, I might have a calendar page that would um, put, um, you know, when, when we were going to be appearing at, at what places. I might have a gallery page that showed images of the band. I might have a press page that showed reviews of the band, what 
what has been said about the band in local newspapers. Finally, I might have a contact us page. The idea is this. You're going to have to put all these requirements you're going to have to put somewhere. You're going to have to put them on some page somewhere. And we already decided that we don't want a, a page, a separate page for every piece of content. So therefore, we are going to decide um, how to organize it. Now you have a lot of different choices in doing it. Um, again, we could have a home page. and have then a page devoted to each member of the band. We could do that. Now, if you think back of what our goals are, and what our personas are, and what their goals are, and the requirements, this probably isn't as good of an organization as that is. What I want you to do for your project is to think of a couple different ways that you could organize your data and decide which way is better. All right? There's always options. There's always other ways that you could do it. So I want you to fully consider a couple different ways and then decide, yeah, that way I think is a better way to do it. All right, I think it's important to do that instead of just jumping to the first thing that you think of. Just like with the sporting goods store. If we were developing a sporting goods, we could take any of these approaches. And any of these approaches, on paper at least, seem reasonable. All right? And we'd have to decide which one is the best for the people that are going to be visiting. Which one is the best to serve the goals of the people. Alright? Because you could probably make an argument for several of these. Some of these probably aren't quite so good, but you can make an argument for at least a couple of these. And so you have to decide how you're going to organize your site. And what do you do for this section? This section is just simply you use Microsoft Word or some other software to make like an organizational chart that says what pages you have and how they are connected. Now you can go more than one level deep or two levels deep. You could have, for example, underneath this page, underneath basketball, let's say, for the sporting goods store, you could have um, equipment, apparel, and shoes. It's relatively easy to do a organizational chart. It's so easy I might be able to do it in Word. Let's see. You could also use Visio if you're familiar with Visio. And there's other tools that you could do as well. Absolutely worst case scenario, draw it like I drew it and scan it in. All right. Um, any of these are potential ways. Let's see. Insert. Smart art? Yeah, that's not a chart. Here we go, I think, a relationship. Hierarchy, there we go. Could always, pardon me? 
Yeah, exactly. So that gives you that, and you could have your home page. And so on. So. And again, yeah, if you didn't need like this guy, you could just delete them off. Pardon me? Oh yeah, you could yeah, you could do it there too. Good good point. The key thing here is when you're done, you should have a chart. And you should have a description of why you chose that particular organization. And you should be able to explain to anyone, gee, if I wanted to find out when the band appeared, when the band is, what, when the band is going to have upcoming appearances, where do I go? And you should be able to say, well, from the home page, you go to the calendar page. Or, in the case of the sporting goods, if I wanted to buy... Shoes for basketball, where would I go to? Well, you could either go to, you know, you could go to the basketball section, and then under basketball, you could go to shoes. Or if you have it designed another way, you could say, well, from the home page, you go to the men's section, and then from the men's section, you go to shoes, and then for shoes, you go to basketball. So these sort of things, if people ask questions, or if you in your mind are thinking of, like, what are some things someone could visit the site for, you should think, and it should be very clear, how you would get from the home page to where you eventually want to end up. Yes? Do you want us to show multiple chart like that if you're saying the question is, is do you need to show multiple choi uh, multiple charts? In other words, here's option one, here's option two. Uh, no. Uh, you, you just need to show the chart that you decided on and, and then briefly discuss the other options. So, for example, uh, in the band case, I might show the chart with the, uh, with the music, calendar, contact, gallery. And then I might say, I briefly considered having a, a band for, uh, or a page for each band member instead and organize it that way. But when I thought about that, you know, uh, the members of our band are pretty anonymous, you know, they don't individually have followings, people are more interested in the band, and therefore organizing it that way really wouldn't make sense in solving the goals. So just, you can just verbally talk about the other options that you considered. You don't have to go and draw a chart for each of them. Draw a chart just for the, sort of like the final answer that you come up with. Oh, the top is on whatever you want. Yeah. The band is just an example that I've used because it's approximately like the right size. One of the challenges or, or one, of the, um, one of the things you want to consider uh, in doing this is you don't want to pick a topic that's too broad or too narrow. You know? So, like, if you were interested in sports, for example, and you, you were to say, well, I want to do my website about sports. Well... Sports is a pretty broad topic, right? You could talk about professional sports, amateur sports. You could talk about team sports, individual sports, winter sports, summer sports. You know, that's a huge site to cover that. So instead, what I would suggest is, um, well, maybe pick a sport or, or, or pick like college athletics or amateur athletics or something like that where you're going to narrow it down a bit. The reason I picked a band for my example is that you could probably do, for like a local band, you could probably do a reasonably sized website without getting too gigantic. So that's probably about the right size of the project that I'm looking for you to do. So that's why I picked the band as an example. You know, rather than just talk abstractly, I wanted to talk specifically about that. All right, so that's the structure section. Notice how each one of these sections we're getting more and more specific. All right? The very first phase we're talking about goals. Those are sort of abstract. Then we'll start talking about requirements. Well, those are things that are actually going to be on pages. Now in the structure section, we're talking about what actual pages we're going to have. Where are we going to put all that stuff on our website? The fourth step is what's called skeleton. And that is where you draw what are called wireframes. All right, and again, you can do this in Word as well, 
Or worse comes to worse, you can, you can sketch it out by hand and scan it. All right? I am more interested in the thought process involved than if it's a, a pretty looking document. And a wireframe is where you sort of draw a high level view of what your page is going to look like. Page or pages are going to look like. So this would be an example of a wireframe. In a wireframe, you sort of just sketch out the high level sections of your page. All right? So, this might be my page. I might have a banner on the top of the page. A navigation running down the left hand side of the page. My main content area here. And then a footer section here. And then maybe I could say something like I'll have the company logo here. Maybe the footer will contain contact information, something like that. It's just a very high level sketch of what your pages are going to look like. Now, you don't necessarily have one wireframe per page. You could do your whole project with just having one wireframe, period. All right? Or you could have a different wireframe, maybe for your home page, and then uh, a different looking wireframe for your other pages. All right? You don't want to have too many wireframes because you want your site to look consistent. So therefore, you don't want to have every page having a different layout. Like one page have the navigation on this side, one page have it on that side. But there are reasons why every page doesn't look, need to look identical. All right? Consistency is important in web pages. Right? But consistency doesn't mean the same as every page looking identical. All right? Consistently simply means that there's some logic and there's some reason. For example, for many people or on many sites, the home page is going to look different than the rest of the site. All right? The home page might, for example, have a really big image on it. So maybe you have a banner. a really big image, navigation, and then footer. Maybe because you want the home page to sort of stand out and to make a, a, a huge visual impact. You, you'll have your, your pages look like that. Maybe certain pages have a sub-navigation. So maybe some of your pages have a main navigation and a content area and a footer. And other pages have, in addition to the main navigation, have a sub-navigation going down the side and then a footer. Or maybe image gallery pages have a different look than pages that have mostly text. All right. So you won't necessarily have a different wireframe for every page, but you could have a couple of wireframes. All right? For a project like yours, the ones that you're working on, if you were planning on having more than two wireframes, you should probably talk to me about it. All right? Um, and this is good news for most students, right? Because who wants to spend a lot of time drawing a million different wireframes, right? Um, and, but it's also good web design practice. Because chances are one or two wireframes for the kind of project that we're working on is completely appropriate. In fact, one wireframe is probably good for most projects that you're going to do in this class. But if you want to get more extensive, if you want to have, for example, the home page have a different design, then possibly a couple wireframes might be appropriate. Or in a special case, maybe there's some other, other uh, uh, designs that you're going to have for pages. But really, this is all the wireframe is. 
It is a sort of a high level sketch of what your pages are going to look like. You will probably have one or two of them for your whole site. Now, the very last Step. So what have we had so far? We've had the strategy section, which is the personas, the description of your site, the personas and the goals. We've had the requirements or scope section, which is a list of the stuff that you're going to have on your site. We're going to have a structure section, which is how you're going to lay out the pages on your site. In other words, how many pages you're going to have, how they're going to be connected, and so on, how you're going to navigate between them. Then we have a skeleton section where you draw these wireframes that represent sort of the high level overview of your site. The last step is the prototype. And the prototype is where you actually go in and start making rough drafts of your pages. So you will have rough drafts of your um, in, in actual HTML and CSS of the pages that you want to make. Yes? On the prototype, it is OK to use Greek text, correct. Um, keep in mind, again, in an actual project, you may s still be deciding how exactly are you going to word something. The prototype is more, you know, another word for prototype would be a model. Getting Pardon me? Getting you started. Getting you started. And getting you started in a way that you can actually show it to other people, too. Because I'll tell you what's interesting. All these other pieces of the document um, contain valuable information, but for many people, until they actually see a web page, it's hard for them to think about how the site is going to look from a wireframe or from a structure diagram or from whatever. When they can actually see an actual web page, even if it isn't complete, um, that's when it becomes real to them and that's when they're able to offer feedback. You do need to explain sometimes to people that it's just a prototype and what that means. I remember, uh, it, it's sort of a different situation, but back in the old days I worked for a car rental company in their IT department. And we had reports about like the values of cars or something like that. and and. I put in, I just like put in a value, you know, just like, you know, hit numbers for the value of the car, like one, two, one, two, one, two, you know, or just something dumb like that, you know, not paying attention. And I remember showing that report to someone in, in, the, in the fleet department and looking and they're like, well, the Mercury wouldn't cost $12,000. It's like, no, that's not a real number. I just hit some keys. I just made it up. And I think they really had a hard time getting past that, all right, the, thinking that there was something wrong with the system that we would say that that car would cost that much money. It's like, no, I just made up that number. It's not meant to be a real number. So you would need to probably explain to people that this is a prototype. This is just there. It's a model for you to play with. And you can show it to people and get feedback then. Um, remember, the earlier that you catch a problem in your uh, design, the, the, the cheaper it is to fix it uh, and the easier it is to fix it. All right? So I'm asking you to have prototypes for three of your pages. Um, ideally, your prototype should, be, um, should have um, HTML and CSS. And it doesn't need to be perfect, but it does need to give me an idea of what your site is going to look like. All right? So yeah, Greek text is OK in the prototype. It's also OK if things don't align correctly. All right? Um, you know, for example, maybe you want your page to look neat like this, and maybe your prototype the content sticks out a little bit. You know, it doesn't line up neatly along that margin like this one does. That's acceptable. It's a model. And a model is used to give people something tangible that they can look at because that is a lot easier for people to critique than sort of these abstract sections in many cases. All right? And 
That's what you'll turn in. You'll turn in a document that contains the first four sections, and you'll turn in some HTML and CSS that turns in the prototype. Ideally, I should get a sense of how the navigation should work. So if I click on a link, I should go to one of your pages. Now, you don't have to have all your links completed, all right? But you should have enough of them completed that I can get an idea of how the navigation works and, and so on. Questions about any of this? All right, what is our next few classes going to be? Our next few classes are going to be based on turning this wireframe and wireframes like this into actual web pages. All right. In other words, I sketched out some wireframes looking like this or looking like this and so on. So far, all the CSS we've learned has been just doing a little bit of decoration, you know, maybe changing the font or maybe um, changing the colors of the web page or whatever. The next few classes are going to be very, very, very much CSS intensive. We're going we're to look at like how we can use CSS to achieve all sorts of different layouts. It's amazing how with one HTML document, you can make pages that look completely different from each other without touching the HTML. And there's a great website that demonstrates this that I'd like to take a look at for a minute here before we close. And that website is called CSS Zen Garden. Now let me explain how CSS Zen Garden works. Here's a page, CSS Zen Garden. Let's look at a couple pieces of content on this page to sort of give us a couple benchmarks. There's the word CSS Zen Garden. There's the words the beauty of CSS design. There's a paragraph that says a demonstration of what can be accomplished through CSS-based design, the road to enlightenment, and so on. As we navigate around through different, pa different pages on this site, we will see the exact same page with totally different style sheets. So the HTML for all these pages is identical. It's the same HTML file. The only thing that's different is the CSS. So this page has the exact same HTML as this page does. And yet it looks totally different. And to sort of prove to ourselves that it is the same HTML, CSS Zen Garden, the beauty of CSS design, a demonstration of what can be accomplished, the road to enlightenment. So notice how every aspect of the page has been changed when we go from one version to another. And you can go through and pick all sorts of different ones. This is the same page. This is the same page. That is the same page. Now, I don't expect necessarily that any of you will come up with, pay, with designs this elaborate, all right? But consider this like, an, like, like inspiration. So 
You know, if you think of, if you have the thought in your head, can I do this or can I do that? There's a good chance that you probably can. All right? In fact, your next assignment involves taking a web page that you create and creating a second version of it with a different CSS file. So you should not touch the HTML file at all other than to give it a different CSS file. And you should make it look as different as possible with the second CSS file. All right? So, obviously, to even approach this level of design and layout, we need to, to learn a lot more about CSS. And that's what we're going to do over the next uh, few classes, is spend some time talking about CSS for layout. So far, we've talked about mainly CSS for like decorating things and putting a little bit of color on it or maybe changing the font or making the font bigger or smaller or a different kind of font. We're really going to go uh, and, and talk a lot about the layout of our pages for CSS, so how we could make a layout to look a certain way. So that's what we're going to focus on starting next time, taking our wireframe and actually making a prototype from it. All right, so that's what we're going to do starting on Wednesday. Are there any questions? It's a rare day. I'm finishing two minutes early. So enjoy your vacation. All right, we'll see you up in lab.